It's a pleasure for me to welcome you to this short video presentation entitled Bound Rationality and Voting Decisions Exploring 160 Year Period. This is a joint work with Benno Torgler and my name is David Stadelmann. Now we are interested in analyzing empirically rational behavior. And we would like to provide evidence for the application of simple decision-making rules in complex and attention-demanding situations. More precisely, what we will try to show and to convince you is that if the level of complexity increases, people rely on simple decision-making rules, mainly they rely on the experts. For this we will analyze referenda in Switzerland from 1848 onwards. Referenda represent simple, frequent and inexpensive decisions in Switzerland and we will show that if complexity in the decision environment increases, then constituents refer more to parliamentary recommendations. Now we are not the first to focus on bounded rationality. Here is a short list of other contributions. Now there are certain data requirements for identification we try to test whether people follow rules of thumb, more precisely we want to test whether when constituents face information difficulties, whether they then follow Parliament's suggestion. This would allow us to provide direct evidence of first order effects of the application of rules of thumb because legislative proposals decided on in referenda lead to real policies. Now, what are the requirements to identify whether people follow rule of thumb. The first requirement is that the variable employed in the decision itself must be objectively measurable. The second requirement is that the decision itself should be simple, inexpensive and frequently repeated. And finally, we need to identify what is a complex environment. And then the rule of thumb should be applied in the complex environment. Now we think we have a setting where all these requirements are fulfilled. We analyzed 555 federal referenda in Switzerland since 1848, so 10 years before Abraham Lincoln becomes president of the United States. And for each of these referenda, Parliament gives a voting recommendation and voters are informed about Parliament's recommendation. So the variable employed in the decision is objectively measurable. The second requirement is also fulfilled. We look at referenda decisions. They present voters with a dichotomous choice, either you accept it or you reject it. In Switzerland, referenda decisions are very frequent and they are inexpensive. So compared to planning a holiday, for example, that's not a dichotomous choice. Okay, so you have many holiday destinations. Planning a holiday is not so frequently done and of course holidays are expensive. So our situation is clearly better than planning a holiday. Now, a bit more critical is how you identify complex environments. What we do is we have two measures to identify complex environments. We use the number of referenda on the same day to identify more complex situations. So when you have to decide on just one referendum, it's relatively less complex than when you have to decide on five or six referenda on the same day. This is our first measure for identification. With a second measure for identification, we use referenda with lower turnouts on day when more referenda are held. So conditional on the fact that there are more referenda day, we look at referenda which are relatively uh, of lower importance. Now, we try to identify the influence of parliamentary recommendation and we expect that parliament's recommendation is higher in a more complex environment. Now this is exactly what we find. Here is just a very simple table with some baseline results. In the first column parliament suggests no, the second column parliament suggests yes. In the rows you see situations where there is only one referendum on a given day and in the second uh, row you see situations where there is more than one referendum on a given day. What we always observe is that when parliament suggests to vote yes, the probability that people vote yes also increases 
for both situations. However, the increase is bigger if there is more than one referendum on a given day. In fact, the increase is by approximately 10 percentage points larger. So the influence of parliament is by approximately 10 percentage points larger in more complex environments where there are more than one referendum on a given day. Now, the baseline results also hold in simple logic regressions when we control for additional uh, variables. Again, the influence of the parliamentary recommendation is larger in more complex environments. And controlling for other variables doesn't change this result either qualitatively nor quantitatively. We perform a large number of robustness tests which also confirm our main results. In particular, we use a second measure, which I already explained. We control for interest group recommendations and other controls. Our results also remain robust when using different time periods. And, well, we do other robustness tests too, leading to the same conclusions. To conclude, we think we have a quasi-experimental setting of voter practices over 160 years, which allows us to identify voters' focus of attention when choices are multiple. We show that voters rely on simple decision-making rules when simultaneous problems demand concentrated attention. In particular, when there are more referenda on the same day, people rely more on parliament. Similarly, given that there are more referenda on the same day, the referendum which receives less attention, their people tend to follow more the rule of thumb. Again, they rely more on parliament. Thereby we explain how people make decisions once the task of voting is held constant over a very long period of time. Thank you very much for your attention.